episode 71 of the Planet Nintendo podcast. Let's see what's on the menu for today. We have PM Picks, what games we've been playing, what games are coming out soon. Everyone's favorite game, Over Under, is back this week. Uh, talking about Starlink, should you buy it? A recent price cut may give you that answer. Nintendo's financial projections, they didn't make it, but we'll talk about it. And uh, where does Labo go from here? So let's get it started. What's up, y'all? Episode 71, the best Nintendo podcast that you will listen to today. <laughs> Back with PMP and the best co-host on the planet, Joe After Work. What's up, man? Yo, yo, chilling, chilling. It's a nice, it's a nice fine Sunday that we're recording this on. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Bobby, Nintendo Guru. What's up, man? Yeah, it was good that you went to Joe first because I'm not the best co host <laughs> on the planet, apparently. Depends <laughs> on who you talk to. I'm, but apparently, I'm, you know, whatever. This guy. <laughs> we'll rework the contract. Yeah, apparently, I'm obnoxious just for the sake of being obnoxious. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. no. I, I do want to address something. So, we, we had a comment. I'm not going to read it directly, but it was basically defending someone that we were talking about. And we've always said that on this podcast, we might get into some, you know, some uh, sticky situations, some some situations that are kind of controversial. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about that. We're not going to beat around the bush because it, it is happening in the in the gaming community. And uh, we want to get our two cents. Sometimes we're brutally honest, but we're, you know, we're going to be real about it. Yeah. But we respect your comment. You know, mm -hmm. we, we went over it. We, we hope you tune in because they said they weren't going to anymore. But yeah uh so that's kind of what's going on we we kind of are talking about someone else today or, or a situation today that's kind of involving someone but <laughs> we'll get to that <laughs> so going we're back controversy to the other i mean listen uh, my, okay, let, me, let me just say this i i did get heated last week and a lot of that it's due to i am just tired of people making these broad bold predictions barely ever getting them right now emily did get one thing right which she basically read the tea leaves off of a pat a patent that came out uh but she also made predictions at the same time that were so far off base it's not even funny she yeah. said that zelda was going to be delayed for six months never happened she said that mother three was going to get announced and launched along the virtual console at the launch of the switch never happened so it's hard for me to like just look at it and go like, well, there was patents out at the time she made the prediction of all that stuff. Was it right? Was it not? I, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like it wasn't hard when you had someone like 10 K basically making these crazy predictions of the switch being on the level of the PS4. Yeah. My thing is, is I just, I get really upset when I see people making predictions like this and then people just hold the anger towards Nintendo and not, the people that made the predictions and then i get called a fanboy in my videos and people yell at me for defending nintendo when i don't feel like nintendo's in the wrong and that's all i um that's my feeling and that's where i get fired up because i'm like man this is enough is enough like when do we stop this so yeah I, I if 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 i did offend anybody um i really don't care no i'm just kidding <laughs> i apologize you know i don't i'm not trying to offend people you know by yeah. any stretch of imagination but listen i'm i'm old school man and i i speak from my heart and nothing's going to stop me from doing that and you know it is what it is if you if you want someone that's that's uh pc and cookie cutter and and gonna yes sir and no sir everybody and and be super polite then that I, i'm not your cup of tea and that's fine i guess yeah and I think some, you know, most of the frustration came from the fact that they were so broad with what they had to say. And it was just like, anyone could have, anyone could have said that. Yeah, and it was anybody. just so safe. It just felt like, I don't know. We'll see though. We'll see. Yeah. Mystery game three, still holding out for that. Can't wait for that, man. Uh, so guys, PM picks this week. What games you've been playing? What games are coming out? Uh, Mr. Joseph, we'll start with you. We'll start with you. <laughs> Oh man. Um oh, there we go. Okay. Just making sure Discord's okay. <laughs> but um, start on that one. Yeah, I know, right? That's another that's another hot topic. But yeah, uh been playing some more Dragon Mark for Death. Um I actually got to play with a full party of four this week, which is really nice. 
Um, that game's just just a blast to, like, go in, just do a couple missions, and especially when you have a crowd of four just, like, blasting through everything, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, other games, uh, one just dropped over um, uh, this past Thursday, Evoland. It was apparently a mobile game that came out a few years ago, and it got a Switch release. One and two got put together for, like, 20 bucks. Um, shout out to CB Nutri because he got me that game, and I did nice. a Nintendo Spotlight on that, and we played through all of Evil Land One, and I jumped right into Evil Land Two. That game is, um, I, I I would recommend it for anyone who enjoys um, bad games. No, stop, dude, stop. this guy. <laughs> no, dude, like the way it starts out is like it starts out as like a Game Boy game, and then it just gradually evolves into like this like. 32-bit style 3D graphical uh, game, and it's, like, adding different check textures. It's a little bit of turn-based. It's a little bit of action RPG. Like, it changes up different styles of RPGs throughout the game. Um, and I just started the second one, so I don't know if it does the same thing there. But <clears throat> it's it's a funny journey because they throw a lot of references to other games and they mention it towards the end in the credits, like, you know, we were inspired by Final Fantasy, Diablo, um, a couple other games. And it was just funny, because you see it in the names of the characters, in the move styles, in some of the, uh, uh, you, you find these chests, and in these chests, you're unlocking more and more textures to add, and they've got, like, quirky names to them. It, it, it's really cute, and... and if uh, you at least play the first one, it's probably like a three, four hour adventure right there. And then the second one's apparently supposed to be like 18 hours or something like that. So they must have uh, really, really uh, made made some money off the first one to be able to make a good second one. I got two games that I basically wanted to talk about. One was Iron Cryptical, which is a top down kind of like a it's a twin stick shooter, basically. Feels like Gauntlet, feels like uh, Smash TV. The, the character designs is a lot like Ghost and Goblins. Uh, this game is, it's actually from the, the company made Aqua Kitty. Um, oh, okay. You know, so really, this is a really good game. This is probably, in my opinion, their best game that they put out. This is a lot of fun. It really is. Comes out to February 13th. Uh, basically, it's it's not really super hard. You basically run around the levels. There's en- there's waves of enemies that come in after you. You're shooting them and taking them out. Four player local uh, co op, which is kind of cool. Um, and the object is is that someone came in and stole the king's gold, and you need to go try to track down the people and get the gold back. So you play the levels, and when you get to the final level, there's like a boss. You beat the boss, then you move to the next uh, level of the basement of the of the you know cellar. Or whatever. So that's a good game. And then the other game that I've been playing and I love is Reverie. Uh, Reverie oh, yeah. is it, it's pretty much like a top-down Zelda slash Earthbound. And what I mean by that is like the game looks like you're playing Earthbound, but like graphically, the character designs and all that. But then when you're actually playing the game, it feels like a top-down Zelda. So it is really, really good. Um, I was, a li- I went in absolutely blind. Knew nothing about it. When the first instances I saw the game, I thought, like, oh, my God, this is Earthbound. Like, they did a, a, a role-playing game like Earthbound, and it's not. And it is really, really good. So, I mean, I recommend that game to anybody, seriously. I think I paid twelve ninety nine for it, which is yeah. super cheap. I mean, like, jump in and get it, man. It's a, it's a super great game, really. Yeah. If you like fighting laundry machines and uh, <laughs> yeah. basement household items, this yeah. game gets weird. <laughs> it doesn't it feel... It feels a little like it'll do. Yes. Like, oh, okay. Yes. 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 Isn't it funny how all these indie developers are coming out with games like that easily could be a virtual console? Like virtual console is going to do so well, dude. Yeah. If it ever. Whenever comes. they decide to wake up and bring it. Well, but, you know, it's supposed to be here day one. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I've been playing, uh, of course, Fortnite. Picked up Splatoon two again. I uh, was playing that, dude. I have not played. Like, there's new specials that I don't even know about, man. It's yeah. I got to waffle. Play Pat, we need to do we, we need to do a stream together again. Yeah, we do. Um and let's do Splatoon 2. I'm down. Like let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it tomorrow night. What are you doing tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Uh I'm off for 5 days, so. There you go. So tomorrow oh, night we're doing it. Go. Tell the tell the wife she's yeah. on the back burner for a night. 
<laughs> Sleeping on the couch. Um, okay, so and also uh what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? March is looking like a great month for games. Talked about that last week. Xeno Ra- Xeno Xenon Racer, uh Yoshi. We got the show. That's on a different console. Don't forget the three DS. Uh, Don't forget the three DS. <laughs> I I think think it, on the 3DS. Everyone Kirby, has Kirby. Yes, Kirby. yeah. Oh, you Honestly, though, if you haven't played that game on the Wii, pick it up. It's so good. It is so good, dude. Top five games. <laughs> there we go. I had to trigger Bobby once. That game <laughs> is not even good, man. That game is so like Epic Yarn, please. dude. It's it's come on, man. You can't even die in it. It's really easy. Yeah, it's cake. Um, I also picked up uh, the newest limited run at Best Buy, uh, Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy's out. I forgot. I forgot. Speaking of limited run, I finally got this damn game. I can mm, oh see God. what the hype about it. There is no hype about it. It's trash. <laughs> hey, hey. Don't hey, hey, nothing. Is it a good game? Be honest. Thank is you. Is it a good <laughs> Thank you. It's, I it's enjoyable. It yet, so I don't it's know. No, no, no. I'm talking to the guy that owns it. I'm talking oh. to the guy that owns it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, okay, yeah. You answered real quick on that one. Yeah, I like it. That, that, was, like suspect, suspect, no. that was a little suspect. <laughs> yeah. um, and then for anyone that else that's interested, the uh, 15th uh, Battle Chef Brigade comes out at Best Buy. So there you go. Oh, oh. Is, that, is that going physical? Yeah, it's nice. going physical. I have to pick that up. So I've been wanting I, to check to that pick out. pick it up because of the fact that Chris Johnston, um, who is no longer with Adult Swim Games, but at the time he gave me a copy of that for free. Ooh, so I'm going to... Um, I might have to just go buy that just to, you know, as a thank you and to support. Yeah, so that's coming out. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the games that we've been playing. Uh, now on to the, uh, the best game on, in the planet. The most fun game. Everyone loves it. Bobby loves it. Number one fan. Over Under. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so for everyone, uh, for anyone that hasn't seen this game before, it's basically five random scenarios these guys have no idea what qu- what the questions are. And basically, I give them a percentage, and they say, Pat, you're crazy. This is too high. Or, no, nah, this is kind of low. I think it could happen. So five scenarios. We'll start with Bobby this time. Uh, <laughs> triggering him again. Mm-hmm. Bobby, 60% chance we have a February <laughs> Nintendo Direct. Oh, my God. Why did you even <laughs> put me on this, man? <laughs> How about this? I don't even care at this point. I could care less. If we have it, we have it. If we don't, I kind of want don't. one. I, want I mean, I want one. Don't get me wrong. I I, I love Nintendo, but I am just so tired of um, people just telling us when it's going to happen, yeah. And basically just be acting like it's gonna, it's a definite, it's coming. Like be ready, and it's like, uh, please stop because you were all, you were completely wrong the entire month of January. Uh, to answer your question, sixty percent. Um, I mean, we're we're midway through. We're about a quarter of the way through the month. Um, so if you're if you guys are listening to this on Tuesday, the new rumor is would be tomorrow. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, so the thirteenth yeah. apparently is the new day. Um, man, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's an eighty percent chance that we'll have it. I think we're gonna get one in February. Okay. I don't know if we're gonna get it this week, but I think we'll definitely get one in February. <laughs> Joseph, I I mean I shared my grievances last week with something similar with <laughs> all these different types of leaks and kind of being over it. Um, I say a hundred percent that it happens in 2019. But to answer your question, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I I'll, I'll say f- screw it. Let's let's continue to troll the audience and uh, by the powers of me jinxing everything, sixty percent chance that it does happen. So it doesn't happen. Ooh, so lower. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go 61%. It'll happen. So definitely over there. <laughs> um, Mr. Bobby, Bobarino. Or no, wait, we're on Joe. We're on Joe. Bobby, Uh-oh. be patient. Calm down. Um, Joe, Mario Kart Tour. There's a 50% chance that it will have more than 5 million downloads. Mobile games. Uh, that scene... I don't know why, but to me that seems low. Am I am I off on that? I'm terrible with what like mobile game. I mean, uh, just to put it in your perspective, Pokemon Go got yeah. like a hundred million. Okay, okay, so yeah, not far off on my assumption there. Then 
And sorry, what was the what was the uh, percent percentage? Uh, fifty percent chance. So half and half, half it and gets half. over five million uh, um, downloads. I should I should have raised that. What game? Fifty million. I'll do Ma- fifty Mar- million. Mario Kart Tour. Yeah, Mario Kart Tour. I'll do fifty million. Fifty million downloads. Yeah, fifty percent chance. I don't know why I said I'll, that. I'll uh, screw it. I'll say sh- yes, it will, and. 75 percent that one i'm like oh yeah i don't even know where to where to really stand on that okay. one but sure yeah let's go let's say that bobby i mean i think i mean 100 million seems like an easy number for pokemon go but that was like a total phenomenon 50 million that's yeah. that's quite a bit it's quite a bit yeah i i know i think like you look at the numbers right now that are happening with mario kart on the switch and I think this is a total juggernaut game. I think I think it does close to 100 million. I think easily. I think okay. that it's. I think there's a no brainer. I think it's one of. It is Nintendo's top franchise. It is Nintendo's best franchise. Um, I mean, you're talking about a game that was basically on the Wii U, and it's sitting at 15 million units right now. That's insane. Yeah. So, and that thing's just going to keep going. I mean, like when the only in recent history, the only one that didn't sell was on the Wii U, and that's still sold compared to how many Wii U's were in the wild. It did like 35 million on, um, you know, it did 35 million on the Wii. So, I mean, you look at that, you go, well, that's the max it did, it's 35. Yeah, but the pro- the difference is, is that everybody will download it. So mm-hmm. it's not a matter of like, dad buys it or dad d- downloads it and then hands it to his kids. All the kids will have their own copy. You know, and I also, but I, I think the main thing that's going to dictate that is what it costs. If it's free to play, that's true. Then I think it does easily a hundred million. If there's yeah. a dollar amount, like if it's a twenty, thirty dollar price tag, no. I don't think it sells. No. Yeah, uh, I think four ninety nine decent chance. Nine ninety nine, I don't think it does. But free to play, I think definitely. Yeah, I'll just put something into perspective here. Super Mario Run had 200 million downloads. And that was a buy. But that was free yeah. to start. That yes. was free to start. Yes. Damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a def. This is a definite then. Yeah, what are yeah. you talking about? I said 5 million at first. Jeez. Um, I actually did. I did put out a video today with some mock-ups with, uh, with Dave. We talked about it. Good video. Go check it out. Um, Bobby. This, this one's going to hurt. This is going to hurt. 70% chance, 7-0, that we see Pikmin 3 remastered or Pikmin 3 HD or Deluxe or whatever before Pikmin 4. So this is pretty much, you know, are you a believer of another port? What do you think 4 is the next one? Who? 7. Who? You. Me? Uh, 0% chance. There's no way they're doing that. I think that they're just going straight to 4. I don't think that because of the fact of like uh, part part of the problem is the way that you actually played that game. Um, yeah, you know it, it the control and what I mean by that is the controls. So you had the 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 game pad was one way. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to stay away from that. I think they're just going to that is not the port that, that Emily predicted. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, she, she didn't really list a name, but, you know, it's not the port, it's not the port that, that I think. I think it's going to, I think the port that people are thinking is probably going to be 3D World. Um, mm-hmm. And so, in my opinion, if that's the way it is, then that means that Pikmin 3 isn't going to get ported. And I don't think we see any type of remaster. Okay. Joe, you believing in this port? Uh... I was going to say, I don't believe in that port, but more on the side of, like, if they brought over a collection of 1 through 3. But yeah, Bobby brought up a good point. I didn't think about it, because I did play a little bit of Pikmin 3, and you do need the gamepad for that. And there's yeah. no not a chance in hell that they make that a handheld-only type game. Um, it being They could Nintendo do title. something similar to Captain Toad, though, where, like, your right hand's a pointer, but yeah, I don't know. And that's more or less what the Wii versions of 1 and 2 were, right? Where you had the Wiimote, you moved them around. 
So they could essentially do something like that and still port things over. Um, and sorry, what was the the over under percentage? Um, seventy percent. We'd rather get a or they're gonna put out the port over the fourth game. Um, zero percent. Oh, over the fourth game. Oof. Yeah, yeah. If that's the case, I say under they bring four in this situation here yes okay yeah yeah i think if pikmin 3 came out it, which actually in the new rumor um i think it's a mistake i th- I think like the new game has definitely been done for a while i don't really see the value of bringing pikmin 3 i mean it kind of sucks it's going to be locked to the the other console but maybe they release it as like an eShop title or something i don't see I that hope, until i hope like... it's more all of them come together or uh, i would more if they eventually bring them like mail piece or something like that yeah for me personally i would rather just have one and two remastered bundled together in a a thing i three whatever it's i mean it's a great game (laughs) but like i I don't know i I like three a lot don't get me wrong three is also very easy compared to the other two Mm -hmm. so you know okay um, and then uh, going to Joe, right? I think it's Joe. Yeah, Joe's turn. Um, we have the hard hitting questions for Joe. Uh oh. So, Dr. Mario World was announced to be another mobile game coming this summer, summer 2019. So, this question is kind of like the whole Pokemon Quest situation because Pokemon Quest came to the Switch as well, started out on the Switch, then came to mobile. So 35% chance that Dr. Mario World is also playable on the Switch. Um, I say under, and my thought process behind that is actually they're going to use this and bring over either another Wii U port in Dr. Luigi to the Switch Ooh. or a new Dr. Mario game to the Switch. I feel like they're going to use that. Have, we already have Dr. Mario on the Switch. Do we? Oh, oh well, well like NES. Yeah, the NES classic, but I'm just saying, I, I feel here. like you know what I mean. A newer, oh, I'm, I'm just saying, newer. I say newer loosely. Doctor but... Waluigi. <laughs> Doctor Waluigi. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. Ah, ah, he is the cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> so you think it's not? No, it's not going to come to the Switch. No, I don't think it comes to the Switch. I think they use this as a way to get some sort of Dr. Mario, Dr. Luigi game on the Switch and okay. kind of make the correlation between the two somehow. Can you play the NES Dr. Mario vertically? Like you can, I don't think so. No. Okay. Mm. Uh, Bobby, Dr. Mario worlds on the Switch. No, nah. no, not okay. happening. Not happening. I don't think, I, I, I think it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me, you know, yeah, because yeah. the fact of you already have a Dr. Mario, I don't think they'll bring Dr. Mario World. I think they want to try to keep their mobile separated. Mm-hmm. This game is more of a Candy Crush thing where they're just going to see what they can make. That's yeah. it. You know? mm-hmm. Okay. I would personally want it on my Switch. That's just me. You have it on your Switch. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bobarino, ending it strong here. 15% chance Retro has something for us. That's really, not Metroid Prime 4. That's not Metroid really, Prime 4. Really, dude? You're coming to me with that question? <laughs> Retro, Retro hasn't been working on anything. It's a zero. Nothing. Question. Nothing at all. No. Okay. Five years, is it? Four or five years? Uh, Retro hasn't been working on anything at all. Zero. Okay. Joe. That's all I could say, but I'm telling <laughs> you, they haven't been working. <laughs> Maybe some faith with Joe. It hurts to say, but dude, I think whatever it is, if they were working on something, that's out the window or it's on the back burner for now. These dudes going in full on Prime 4. It's what we're going to get. We're not seeing anything from them for another three years minimum. I got to ask, though, like, what was up with the the whole Star Fox Racing thing? It could have just been a rumor. It could have been a concept. Yeah, you know. That was a convincing logo. That was a convincing. Well, no, wasn't that? Oh no, I know what logo you're talking about. But that wasn't that logo wasn't from. That logo wasn't from Retro though. Yeah, yeah, it was just like a random. And then they had a photo of like a uh, of an R wing or whatever. But wasn't that one for Starlink or whatever? I think so. It's not. Just trust me. 
This yeah. is where, see, this is what we're talking about when we get frustrated by the, because then like, I'm thinking one thing that it's legit, but it's actually not. So like these, these leakers, these rumors, like it definitely yeah. gets in the way. Um, it's rough, but what are you yeah. going to do? It, it, <clears throat> I'm also reading I'm a, another article. Sorry for the, mo for your mobile thing. 300 million downloads. <laughs> Of what? Super Mario Run, um, as of uh, October thirty first. So Pokemon I don't know if Go this is accurate, like but half a billion then. Yeah, Pokemon Go is way up there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say if we don't see it really soon, no, I don't think so. Pet, it's just it, what a waste of talent though. Nintendo, what are you doing, bro? Was it, like, was it... sorry. Four or five years, you have the team that made the, the greatest, like, platformer in the last, like, five years. Just sitting there, you know, porting games. I'm sure they were trying to work on things, and you know what? Not We don't see everything. We don't get to see everything, unfortunately, and that's sort of the sad nature of development cycles is there are games that are never talked about, and we will never know about because they never make it past a certain point, and then they get scrapped, and... They go on to another project because it just doesn't see the light of day or those concepts from that original idea get put into something else that, yeah. you know, that is part of a franchise that people know that tends mm -hmm. to happen a lot, too. Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Bobby's struggling over here. I, this is a hard one, man, because I can't. I can't. Um. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the I hope the information I know is absolutely wrong. But it's, I hope we're all wrong. You know, no, no, no. I really hope I'm wrong. That way, because it would be nice to have something. But but you also want it to be, you know, a great experience <laughs> too. You know, so it's like you guys got to remember, know. Bobby's an insider and he's holding some stuff back. I know this. I know this one. This one is. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so I don't know. This was this was a kind of a cool thing that I heard this week because I totally forgot about this. Um, so I was listening to Talk Nintendo podcast this week. Uh, Corey ba Corey Burkham, who was actually uh, does music, he's working on Chicken Wiggle music. Um, nice. So Perry, did I say Corey? Perry Perry Burkham. Uh, Perry basically made the point that he went to pack south he was talking to jules and they were having a conversation about metro prime Four. and he was like something that i had brought up on another podcast was the whole team basically is gone from there it's not yeah. it's not the prime team is there anymore so but but perry brought up a point where he said maybe they outsource armature and bring armature back because that's what happened. They went and, and formed Armature, which did worked on Halo and worked on ReCore. And maybe they go back and they hire them to be like, hey, help us make this Prime 4 game. So that's a possibility. Okay. Yeah. This whole thing is, I would love to have been a fly on the wall for this. This is like one of those conversations. Like, I would have loved to have been there and see what the hell the thought process was. Like, all right, let's bring on Retro back into this. This is one of those ones that you don't hear anything about for about 10, 15 years, and you'll hear about it when everything goes south. Yeah. Like when, when the relationship between Retro and Nintendo dis dissipates or someone gets fired from Retro, that's when you'll hear it. Well, there was also the things, on, apparently uh, one of the dudes, uh, I forget the name, the name escapes me, but like a couple of weeks ago, when that got announced, that whole um, restarting development of Prime 4, mm -hmm. um, someone who used to work at Retro Studios was saying well, what about the other game that we were working on? So there's that, too. Not that we were working on, that you were working on. On, uh, and like, 2015 or something like that? He, would, yeah. he, basically, he basically threw it out there that, 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 that Retro was working on something yeah. else. Yeah, sorry, I meant Retro, not as yeah, in, like, but, Retro but, Nintendo. But, not like, but he wasn't working on anything there. I, mm -hmm. I can't. I can't have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just let you guys know, like Retro has been doing some porting for they. A couple of them had a hand in porting Tropical Freeze. They they did a couple Mario Kart Eight tracks, but that's haven't been doing much. So mm -hmm. I don't think so. But it'd be cool if they just came out with I don't know, like a random platform or something. 
Um, so Bobby wanted to bring up, uh, so that was over and under. <laughs> so Bobby wanted to bring up uh, a big price cut of a game. And if you should get it. Starlink. Um, basically, I just wanted to pretty much throw it out there. Like if people haven't got it yet, what do you guys say to them? Besides the price drop, what 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 words of encouragement do you say or do you do you feel to get somebody to jump on board with this game? For me, it was, you know, this is this could easily be the Star Fox game that should have been and Ubisoft did a great job integrating the Star Fox crew. So, if you're hesitant about this game and you wanted to get it on the switch that's probably the ideal platform to get it on this time around that's not me being a nintendo fanboy that's just saying like "Eh, dude this was this is a star fox game and this should have been what zero could have been i know there's noise in the background but don't worry that's not gonna really pop up on the podcast um the uh the i mean the other thing is it's a it's a nice shooter adventure there's a lot of dog fighting you can do it does have some rpg elements so if that's up your alley then 20 bucks i mean that's a that's for physical with the freaking r wing right yeah, yeah that's it's not the digital starter packs. that's yeah yeah so there you go i mean you don't get the weapons of the digital version but that's a really good way to start start that game for sure yeah yeah i mean i of course i picked it up day one big star fox fan but if you go into the store and you're seeing this for 20 dollars, i mean it's a little skewed because you're probably going to want to get one of the accessories especially if you get in the physical so that 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 price is probably more around like 40 bucks uh it's crazy that the the planes are more than the, the starter pack now um but yeah i think you should pick it up i don't think it's going to go below 20 dollars um, I will say it is a little repetitive on like the missions and the different things that you can do in the game, but I kind of like that stuff. I just like getting lost in that game and just like doing these random side quests and stuff. But the story is compelling. If you are, you know, a, even a little bit of a Star Fox fan, there is plenty of fan service in there. Um, so I think I think it's a must buy. Honestly, at twenty dollars, like there are some there are some games that you can get at twenty dollars, but they're I don't think they're as good as Starlink personally. Yeah, and if anyone does have the game and hasn't done the Star Wolf DLC missions, I recommend doing that alongside the actual stories. So that way you don't feel too overpowered and just burn through it, because I made that mistake, and I just kind of, like, ripped through the DLC in, like, 30 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Bobby, what about you? You're not really a Star Fox fan. No, I'm not a Star Fox fan really that much, but um, I'm, I'm a fan of Star Fox 64. Anything else, I'm really not and nothing else grabbed me at the way that star fox 64 did um star fox zero is a flaming pile um but like for me when i played this game i was like man this just takes me back to star fox like it just makes me feel like this is the proper sequel to star fox 64. what i liked about it was there was a good storyline to it there was i liked the characters that they introduced the you know from starlink like i really fell in love with that game and i felt like man i could i could totally see a sequel coming to this and even i would could see nintendo just going to ubisoft and going like okay you've earned our trust make us a star fox game like it's just really good man i gotta ask you guys though do you think this is the final the final toys to life game i think they'll still be around as like things here and there as far as a big one there's got to be something small that's going to blow up in order for companies like Ubisoft and who else? What, Disney? Because, I mean, as good as this game is, it did the best on the Switch. I've been hearing bad things like sales wise, PS4, Xbox. And to see this game already, and it doesn't reflect the game at all. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's already $20, that's a big price cut. We're seeing big, big price cuts. Ubisoft usually has big price cuts like mario rabbits i just saw on twitter is 20 dollars now at best buy but uh i don't know man i don't see the toys to life being a thing anymore i think if they do starlink 2 i don't think we see i don't think we see toys no and maybe that's a good thing because yeah. that gives them more time for cre- being creative elsewhere with that game yeah start 
Ubisoft does this. This is not like people should not sound the alarms that this no. did bad. Like this is just Ubisoft trying to get rid of whatever's left in stock and inventory. Like Ubisoft runs the beginning, runs the gambit, and then bounces. Everybody that I know that played this game on Xbox, on PlayStation 4, regret that decision. They all said that they wish they had bought the Switch version because of the Star Fox stuff. So, man, jump on. Seriously. And for 20 bucks? Come yeah. on. Yeah. And Please. you gotta remember, this game was announced during, like, the tail end of that toys of life phase like it was showed off two years ago yeah and that was sort of when you started to see all these toys of life companies start to die out yeah whoever decided to uh to ask for star fox deserves a raise because i don't know how this game does (laughs) if it doesn't have star fox in it i think you're right i think it bombs i really do i mean don't get me wrong it's and it's still a good game but i think that with Without Star Fox, it bombs. Yeah. I don't think I would have took a chance on it, though. Ditto. Ditto. No, I, I wouldn't have bought it at all. Way. I'll be honest with you. It felt... The first year they showed it, I was like, oh, okay, this looks interesting. I want to see more. And then the next time I saw it, I was like, yeah, I don't want to get it. And then I remember sitting um, in the hotel room with Jules at E3 talking about the UB convention. And I was like, dude, Miyamoto was on stage again. They have Star Fox. And, and he's like, what? And I watched it back and I was like, oh my God, I want this game now. Like Instant it was a sale. It, yeah, it was done. I went from no to yes like that. So, yes, yeah. it's, it's crazy how just that one thing get everyone yeah. ready to go. Dude, even if it was Captain Falcon, man, same thing. It would have been the same thing. Dude. Um, and uh, besides the game itself, you're getting an awesome freaking R Wing. Yeah, like man. little statue so that alone i'd pay 20 bucks for so uh, i think it's a good game i, I want to get back into it man i didn't put enough time into it it's 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 good it like you said it does get repetitive at some point especially like the final steps towards that final mission but mm-hmm. the payoff i felt like was worth it uh going through yeah. going through the trouble um just sorry a quick tangent because i have a question for you that kind of ties in with this mm-hmm. um do you think this gives us different characters? And forgive me if we've already talked about this in the past, but do you think this allows for Ubi to kind of like take certain characters that Nintendo doesn't really use and bring them into other no, things no, that they do? I think, no, I think it. I think it. It gives Ubi more, more space and ro- you know freedom. What I think it does is it. It basically tells them. That like if they're working on a game, and it makes sense to mm-hmm. add a character to it, Nintendo will not turn a blind eye to it, and they will tell them go ahead. Yeah, like no no questions asked. I don't think like an example, like if they're making a oh my god, if they're making like a like a a water sports thing, and they mm-hmm. want the name Wave Race, or uh, if they're making like a like a angels and and devils game, and they go like hey we want Pit. I don't, I think that might make, like, they might turn, Nintendo might turn around and go, okay. But, like, if it's something weird and they're just like, hey, give us, give us a little Mac. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be like, no, no. Like, it's got to make sense to the game. Of course. If it makes sense to the game, then I think Nintendo just goes, yeah, it's a no brainer, do it. I hope they do, man. Mario Rabbids, Star Fox, and Starlink, these are new games. They're fresh ideas. Like, I have no problem with it, man. You want to make a futuristic racing game? Here we go. Here's F Zero. Like, I can't, like, like, like an, an example is like I can't see them <laughs> getting Waluigi for division. Like that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like that's that goes not gonna saying. happen. Yeah. But like if you get like ser- like it's a game similar, then yeah, you know what I mean? Like I could see it happening. You can't see Waluigi being the main villain of the division, taking over DC. No, but I can see him in uh in Far Cry, you know what I mean? I can see Wario as the Far Cry yeah, villain or something. Yeah, yeah. Where are my gold coins? Where's my castle? Why am I Montana? <laughs> uh, okay, so we have a, a pretty hot topic right now. Um, so the Nintendo Switch, or Nintendo itself, made a, a sales pro- uh, projection. Uh, they wanted to have 20 million uh, sales of the Nintendo Switch <gasps> this past fiscal year. Uh, they've been open about this. They've they've recently lowered that number to 17 million. Um, and let me read a quote from Furukawa. Um, okay, so he says, as we look back so far, 
for this fiscal year. We now evaluate that our efforts to fully convey the appeal of Nintendo Switch hardware and software to the number of new consumers we originally hoped to reach were insufficient. Um, and basically, he goes on to say the year on year sales increased during the first half of the fiscal year, April to September turned out not big enough, which also affected the revision of the unit forecast as we look back now. So basically, from April to September, they didn't hit their goal of Nintendo Switch sales. Um, and there's been you know plenty of people and plenty of articles uh, definitely uh, giving it to Nintendo for, for not making that mark. Um, I personally, I'll, I think I'll start with this. I personally liked, you know, the, the confidence that Nintendo had with this. This is very like, this isn't really like them. I mean, coming from a stinker of the Wii U to, to, to put this out there, I think it was bold. And, um, I don't know if it was the smartest thing. Like if you guys looked at 2018, if you looked up their entire lineup, um, maybe they were expecting more out of Pokemon. Maybe they were expecting more out of smash. But if I was looking at that 2018 lineup, I don't see 20 million there. It was it was very port heavy. I think maybe they thought Labo was going to be a little bit bigger than what it was. Possibly. I just there's just there's a lot of things, man. There weren't really a lot of heavy hitters. Mario sports game, Kirby. So somewhere along the line there, I don't think either the ports didn't do as well as they thought, or some of these like major releases like Kirby or something didn't do as well as they thought. But I think it comes down to Labo, Pokemon, and Smash. I think they just expected Smash to move consoles. Yeah. In terms of like and and let's be fair. Th- what that article's not telling you is is that Nintendo did move consoles last year. Like yeah. Yeah. massive amounts of consoles. And the, and the crazy thing is is if they would have sold consoles up until October, we might be talking a different story. They're only missing this by 3 million units. That's crazy. That they've only missed. And by the way, <clears throat> we still have a couple months to go. That's yeah. the other thing that, that doesn't make sense to me why they're talking about like, well, we, we missed our mark. So did um, they sell 17 or did they revise the mark to 17? They're planning on selling. 17. I thought they were at. I thought they were at 34, which meant they I thought they ha- they're at a total of might 30, be their total. Yeah, right now, 34 million. But they did what? 15 last year. So they're close. Okay, yeah, yeah. They said it's reset the estimate to 17. So they're not at 17. However, this was uh, said at the end of last month. So you have all of February and all of March to to hit that 17. I don't know the exact number that they're at, but it seems like they're resetting the projection to 17. So they didn't even hit 17. They are, I'll tell you right now, because I'm pulling up the financial reports. They are sitting at right this moment 32 million units. So okay. they've sold 32 million units right now. What did they do last year? Uh, 16 million last year, like 15 or 16 million last year. So they're they're about they're, they're gonna be about two, they're like six. They're sitting at about 16 million right now. Yeah, this year they sold. Yeah. They'll probably hit then. Which so is they'll great. Hit the seven, they'll hit the 17 million. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. 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 Um, the 20 million's a little iffy Mm -hmm. but they do i think they also know they don't have a whole hell of a lot left in the tank right now till the end of the fiscal year and they probably just called it quits pretty much you know i mean like they knew they'll hit like a a million or maybe they know that they're going to hit it and they're just like well let's kind of undersell it you know and then we sell and it raises the stock value and everything who knew i mean who knows it's it's weird do but you they, like um, this though, Bobby? Do you do you like when when Nintendo comes out and says, "This is our mark that we want to hit," or should they keep that kind of hush hush? No, that, they do it all the time. They've always done. It. It's what it's what companies do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Listen, let's be let's be fair. Let's be honest. Everybody thought that when they announced that twenty million this year, they really thought like, "Wow, dude, that's you're really overselling it," because mm-hmm. last year. They did, like I said, 15 million. Um, and I don't want to say they struggled to it. Part I, I think this is what they looked at. They were like, hey, we did 15 million this year. And we struggled making the product in the early portion of the year. So if we had a full year of strong like production, we should be able to hit it no problem. Mm-hmm. It just didn't work out that way. And and I but I'm okay with them making these announcements. And I'm okay making bold announcements. You know, like it's it's a good thing. It's good. 
Okay. Joe, uh, any factors that you think led to kind of undercutting it or was it just ambitious? Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of B maybe, um, you know, that you talk about April, April, I think was Labo month. And then we got Donkey Kong in May. June was a cluster of just everything. June was probably one of the weirdest months because we got two DLC packs uh, expansions in Mario yep. Rabbids um, with the Donkey Kong stuff and the Octo expansion. And then we got Mario Tennis. And at that point, I was just like, I was so confused as to what the heck <laughs> they were doing. They're cramming yeah. everything into that <laughs> month of June. Um, when you could have just spread that out a little bit more towards the summer, but even then, those aren't really things I feel like that you go and sell a Nintendo console for. Those are more for the people that already own Nintendo consoles, and when you think back, yeah, S uh, Smash Pokemon, and maybe that sleeper little indie hit called Octopath Traveler for the JRPG fans might have sold mm -hmm. a few units there, too. Um... Everything else in in between, it was kind of like a cluster. Oh, Hyrule Warriors was the other one. Also, I think we wasn't got there that like one. Captain Toad or something. Captain Toad was in July, and I don't the think we got anything in August. Is, if the reports are true, there's reports coming out that they moved 10 million units in October, November, December. That's crazy. That's that, that just insane. tells you that if they would have had a better lineup last year. They would have crushed that twenty million. No problem. Yeah, that midsection is really where it, yeah. you can tell where when they said April to September, those were the games that came out. I mean, those are, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they're 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 great they're great games, but you don't. I don't think you sell a system off of DLC expansions. No. Yeah. Now let me let me ask you this because Bobby's actually brought this up before. So Arms never comes out. Gets delayed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh seriously now i think now, it's a different i think it's a different tale man now if this arms comes this out this february, year yeah, yeah this past february or march like 2018 february march arms comes out there was a dry spell there we had to wait for kirby for a while hey, you got hey, a big hey, multiplayer Bayonetta game one and two fam don't don't diss that, the yeah, Bayonetta that's true, that's one that's and true. two but Come like on, that that's nintendo's consoles. thinking though like let's put out a port and that that'll be our big thing but like yeah it don't work like that bro well, the uh, thing is, is the thing is, is obviously Bayonetta didn't do gangbuster numbers. Oh no, it's not even on these charts. So it, it did better than it did on the Wii U. Mm -hmm. But you cannot tell me for a second that if Arms would have launched when it in in 2018, full roster, yeah. and all the support they had. Don't don't come with this nickel and diming stuff that they did, and I don't mean nickel and dime, I mean like the slow rollout. Mm -hmm. A fighting game deserves everything at launch. Don't treat it like Splatoon. If they come out, they put that game out, then I think we, we're talking a different tale altogether. You bring that out at the beginning of the year and let that run and give that a full basic year to run by itself against no competition because you have nothing coming out. At least then you could go like, here's a brand new game. Kirby's a brand new game. But that's the problem. They They... They blew their My load on that first year. Well, the pro it isn't even that they blew their load. Like, they put a lot of great stuff out that first mm -hmm. year, and they needed to do that in order to, to rebuild confidence. But the problem is, is you put the game out, you know, and you you put it out right in the middle of, like, great games. Yeah. I feel like the yeah. same thing with uh, with, with, with uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. Yes, that was... Drop it in the middle, it'll, in the middle of a solid moment. That and, was a you crime. Know, like, yeah, because that came out and Mario Rabbids came out right after it, right? No, it came yeah. out the week oh, before Odyssey. Odyssey came out. Yeah, that's the right. The week right. before Odyssey. Yeah. That's a And crime. just like ARMS, like yeah. a month later, you had Splatoon. And honestly, even if you have this shiny toy, Splatoon is your flagship multiplayer game. Yeah, like, man. There's no way. Even if you did, I mean, it would have been it would have been the same thing if you released Splatoon 2, then ARMS. Like, some yeah. people would have jumped to ARMS, but they yeah. would have been right back to Splatoon. If anything, if, like, the if there was a way to go back in time and, like, somehow start up Hyrule Warriors before Fire Emblem Warriors, so that way Fire Emblem Warriors and ARMS drop the following year and you have two new IPs in that, I think you'd you have a different story and be able to sell a little bit more. Granted... It, it, it's a it's a Musou game, so those I don't know how typically 
they sell in Japan or, or out here in the States, but yeah, but that it was a solid was game. Solid, was a solid game. game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and fans are willing to wait for what, what they want. Like perfect example is Wargroove. Here's a game like that's been like a year in development extra yeah. and it comes out and it's like top of the charts. So, I mean, what they should have done is they should have don't even announce, like announce arms and go, Announce it at the launch and go, hey, we got this brand new IP that's coming out. We're going to bring it out at the tail end of 2017, early 2018. At that point, you could push it a little bit, right? And you could just be like, okay, we are going to put it in 2018. I think, man, I think that game does fantastic. Dude, the, imagine, think... imagine that test punch in the beginning of 2018. That was so... Oh my god, man! Yeah, that's a different people tale. Were hyped. That got a lot of people hyped. I got. But dude, I'll tell you right now, they launched it. I played it. I enjoyed it. And then here comes Platoon Two, and I was like, "See ya." Yeah, I'm yeah. out, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of. I it think went. that's a lesson learned, though, for how they roll out some of these games. You know, it's like yeah. maybe yeah. they're gonna think twice about what their next big lineup looks like and make sure like you know you keep your multiplayer games separate from each other because at that point you're competing with yourself yeah. yeah and we look at 2019 and it's interesting because i don't think we have a multiplayer game we have a bunch of single player games animal crossing luigi's mansion possibly pikmin 4 animal not... crossing is your multiplayer game yeah that's true I mean, I I mean, I'm not being facetious. Like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll that'll have a lot of yeah. people going to different towns and all that stuff, and that'll be your game. That's kind of like a multiplayer. That's going to be your game that really is your juggernaut, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and then uh, quickly to end the show. Uh, unfortunately, it's not on a on a light note, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Nintendo Labo. I figured, you know what? Why not? It's it's not been really talked about. Um, the last we've heard of it, they've come out with the the robot kit. It was the it was the variety kit, the robot kit. There wasn't another one, right? There was no, yeah, one the, more, the vehicle no? the vehicle kit. The vehicle kit. Yeah, the submarine and stuff like that. Yeah. And the last that we heard about it was Nintendo just said we're gonna continue to support it. Um I saw something I think it was on Twitter where GameStop is now selling it for thirty dollars. Uh that's I nuts. Best buy is too. Yeah, Best Buy. Any of the kits, thirty bucks. I gotta I gotta give it to you guys. I'll start with Joe on this one. Where does Labo go from here? How can Labo become as insane as it was before? Because that launch, there's a lot of people interested. Um, and I think that's a, that was all it was, was people were interested enough to at least give the first run a go and figure out if it really was for them or not. And I think for most people, probably wasn't for them it definitely targeted towards kids for sure you know you got your schools that were uh, apparently like i th- want to say it was the uk that was like implementing them into schools couldn't be wrong about that yeah um, i think it was and it's a neat feature there i think this is one of those weird nintendo things that they just keep rolling out but in smaller uh in in, in smaller amounts so to speak uh for lack of a better word there but um but yeah i just i don't see them doing anything big with this that i can think of unless you know i'm in there being weird nintendo because this is one of those nintendo being weird moments here um they could implement them more into games i know we joked about talking about uh yoshi's crafted world having labo in it (laughs) yeah but it's not a far it's not a far too far fetched idea they can keep implementing these things into their games in creative ways i think i have an idea bobby uh the trash just throw it in the recycling <laughs> just make a labo oh trash God. can there you Car- go bobby cardboard baler just put in the cardboard baler uh, it's it's done <laughs> it's over there's uh, listen there's no need to save it there's no need to do anything our our friend reminded me today when I podcasted with him, Mr. Badbit. Uh, he basically put it out there and said that he called it. It was going to be a flaming, a flaming, steaming pile, and it didn't do well. I think here's the last ditch effort. Okay, last ditch effort. Nintendo, dive in the pool, baby. You come out with Super Mario Maker Two. Stop, stop it. And you have a build slash program your own amiibo kit. Okay, stay with me. Now you can program this amiibo. <laughs> Bobby's done. 
You can program this. I wish you would listen to these creative ideas, man. You can program your own, your own amiibo to do different functions, maybe having different elements, you know, add elements to the level. I think that's where it goes with it. It's, it fits the theme of creating things. Mario Maker, you have hours and hours to create levels. Why not create your own amiibo to do different things? Yeah. I think that's a cool idea. It's neat because it gets you Sell something. It. Like, I'm thinking you know, more towards, like, like if you're gonna keep it Chill. aimed towards kids, no, 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 Bobby, hear me out, hear me out. Because you have game, you have you have things like Kirby, you have things like Yoshi, these games that you know can cater really well towards kids. Why not have an accompanying piece of that outside of the amiibo? Like, why does it always have to be amiibo? Why not have some sort of thing that you can build that attaches to your Joy-Con? Like, have a Kirby. With his ma- and the Joy-Con is his mouthpiece, and you put the thing in the mouth. I just and... like the fact that the programming element was there, like yeah. pre-programming for like kids and stuff. But I don't know, that kind of interests me, man. Like make your own amiibo or like make different functions for like a Mario Maker game. I, but outside of that, unless you attach a franchise to a Labo kit, I don't think I think it's a dud. I'm with you there, Bobby. But it's dead. It's dead. Stop, guys. Amiibo, make build your own amiibo. St- you guys are jumping the shark. Let's wrap it up. Let's go. Hey, we're trying to be here? weird Nintendo here. Yeah. What well, if we what? ran Nintendo? Well, that, <laughs> thank God you don't. Thank God me and Sean do. Nintendo <laughs> CEOs, we messed up, man. Um, <laughs> Hearing that, I thought to myself, thank God we didn't do that podcast. Jeez. I don't know. I like the idea. But I don't know. I just feel bad for the guy that made the, uh, you know, the different steps where it's like animated where to fold it and stuff. Shout out to that guy. Jesus. Why, why do you feel bad for him? He got paid. Probably get made more money than you do. Yeah, probably did. Um, but there you go. Um, let me know in the comments if you made it this far. Labo Amiibo. Program your own Mario Maker. Oh Amiibo. my god, please stop I like it. it. <laughs> um, but guys, thank I you so you much and, for watching. I think you and Dave were uh, pre-partying before, your, before he did his podcast. Gonna, or they were using write... Labo for something else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to write to Furukawa and be like, where do you get off? and then propose it to him. Uh, so that is uh, episode 71 of PMP. Like always, you can check out Mr. Joe After Work at joeafterwork.com forward slash sexy pics. And Bobby, you can check out nintendoguru.com. Uh, I think they're there as well. You can check that out. Uh, guys, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next Tuesday. Peace out. Preston.